Rest is biblically mandated for us, but laziness is not. We are commanded to take a day of rest, but we are warned to never become lazy. Look up Exodus 20, verse 8, or Ecclesiastes 10, 18, or Ezekiel 16, 49. Biblical rest, therefore, doesn't provide an excuse for lazy, but what's the difference? First, rest is a planned part of human productivity. In other words, rest is something that we schedule in order for us to continue healthy production. Without proper rest, we reach burnout, higher stress, and many other unhealthy symptoms. Laziness, however, is rebellion against productivity. It actually surrenders production and brings it to a halt. Secondly, rest is a responsibility to our created purpose. Rest has been woven into the very meaning of our lives, but laziness is a life of irresponsibility and a choosing to ignore that which one was created to do. The applications of this biblical contrast are many, but meditate on an area of theology where this concept misses the masses most often in this world. And that area is known as eschatology. Eschatology is the theology regarding the last chapter of human life here on this earth. It is about death, judgment, and final destiny of our souls. You may easily connect the idea of rest with eschatology. That term is often used when referring to one who has died. We call it eternal rest. But what isn't so clear to us is how laziness connects with eschatology. Now listen to 1 Peter 4, 7-8. The end of the world is coming soon. Therefore be earnest and disciplined in your prayers. Most important of all, continue to show deep love for each other, for love covers a multitude of sins. When it comes to eschatology, we are warned against laziness. This verse identifies that laziness happens when we neglect or ignore it as a reality in this world. It calls us to be mindful, not ignorant, that there is an end of this world that is coming. As disciples, we can get lazy in our talk about this world, our lives, and our goals when we refuse to discuss the temporal nature of it all. While it's understandable that death isn't one that we as humans like to talk about nor concern ourselves with, we get lazy when we treat it as the forbidden subject until forced to deal with it due to an actual death. How many of us have sat through a funeral message pushing away the very concept of one's own eschatological end? We also can get lazy eschatologically when we live our lives irresponsibly. This may be historically and traditionally understood as sinful actions that we commit, and that is certainly one aspect of it. However, another aspect of eschatological irresponsibility are the sinful actions of omission as we refuse to acknowledge, discuss, consider, and do the things we are created on purpose to do. Notice that this word encourages us to be both mindful of the end of the world and also to actively live out lives of prayer and love. We can rest knowing that Jesus has all things, including eschatology, in His control. But we are also not to think that rest is the same as laziness. We are called to rest confidently in Jesus while being mindful, prayerful, and loving every day until that day when the end comes. So may you find such rest without laziness. Resting to stay alert. That's discipleship. Following Jesus, being changed by Jesus, and being committed to the mission of Jesus. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, you told us that the end of all things was near. Sometimes we get very complacent and we lose track of the urgency of what is called today. Would you help us to wake up and to realize that time is short? And would you help us also to find rest in not fearing that day, but find rest and comfort in the peace that we have knowing that you have all things past, present, and future in your hands. And you promise for all those who trust and believe in you 
that you will welcome us one day into heaven. Until then, Lord, we ask that you would help us today not to be lazy, but that you would, in a peaceful rest, give us that confidence then to live out our lives in prayer and loving others as you first loved us. Thank you, Jesus, for being with us today. It's in your name we pray.